Hey everybody, welcome to this month's tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hiddeman, the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And today I just wanted to cover a couple of dimensioning tips, uh, specifically when applying manual dimensions in your drawings. And I'm going to show a couple of simple ones and I think a couple of uh, handy tips. So make sure you stick around for the whole video. Uh, so first off, I want to start with something simple. Now, everybody hopefully should know that you can come in here and you can add your basic horizontal and vertical dimension simply by picking your two points or more and then middle mouse click to place that dimension. Um, so let's say I wanted to dimension out something like this cope that I have here. Um, something that I used to do was I would actually join these together with some sort of annotation calling them out as a cope or we use the term block and you can actually do that in Tecla by selecting these two dimensions and then you have this link and unlink options link will simply join those together into a sort of kind of a group dimension so we're understanding that these two dimensions are, are going to the same thing uh, especially when you have a lot of complex stuff going on you know not necessarily this example but that just kind of helps us join them together. And then you can go into one of these dimensions and add something like your cope note or your block note, uh, however you like to call that out at your company. Um, so just a minor little thing, but it's something that when I, I was trying to mimic the types of drawing dimensioning that I did previous to using Tecla, um, this was really handy for me. Um, also, while I'm here, something I, I wanted to point out real quickly is these dimensions that are going uh, at least this one is flipping to the top. Um, that can actually be adjusted, and you don't really see it here, like this isn't much of an issue, but let's say I had a dimension here for this half inch setback. Maybe when I place the dimension, it doesn't quite go to the side I want. Maybe I wanted this on the left side. Um, very easily, there's this flip outside dimension option that you can select and then pick, and it will actually flip that dimension to the other side. You can repeat that as many times as you need. Um, if you're trying to do that from the time you actually place the dimension, the order that you pick is critical here. The second point places the text on that side. So if I pick from uh, right to left in this case and then place the dimension, you notice the dimension goes to the left. And then if I go from uh, left to right and place the dimension, it'll kick to the right. So that, that is another little tip in there, but you know it's okay to come in here and just flip that using that flip outside dimension option anytime you want. So that was just a really quick set of tips uh, for this. I just something that, like I said, it came up for me when I was first starting to use Tecla, so I thought some folks out there might appreciate that. Now getting into a little bit more complex tips as far as these dimensions go, let me open up a different drawing here. I set this uh, this connection up with sort of some oddball bolt spacings. Now, I, I you know this may not be a realistic example, but just hopefully it can um, help you guys out. When you're trying to dimension a bolt group like this, and you can see that I have a brace that's actually coming down at an angle, often I want to dimension those in relation to the brace. So I'm showing something like a gauge on a on a flange, right? In this case, it's a WT brace. And you may, uh, you may know this already, but when I activate this free dimension command, Tecla is going to keep trying to sort of align the dimensions to the points that I pick. So if I come in here and I start picking random points, you can see how it's starting to, you know, it keeps trying to adapt to what I'm doing. And that's not giving me the, the sort of dimension string that I want. I mean, that's not really helpful to anybody. Um, now, what some folks may do is you may come in here and sort of align that first dimension with something else, and then you can use the add point to get those um, those bolt dimensions. You know that is an, an option, and then you can you can get a, get rid of the extras here if you don't want those anymore. But you know while that works, it's not exactly. The, the cleanest or the easiest way to do it. It's, you know, it's effective, but um, there are some better options here. So what I wanted to show uh, you guys today was these uh, perpendicular dimension options and the parallel dimension options. So these are really, really handy because they allow me to, like in the case of parallel dimensions, I can pick two points along a line that I, that I want my dimensions to be aligned with and then I can pick anything I want. You can see that the dimension is no longer sort of rotating and flipping around. This is gonna make it a lot easier for me 
to get that dimension string aligned with something because I chose that option to be parallel with that edge of the plate. So let me just show you that again. I can activate the parallel dimension tool. We can pick two points simply indicating what I want to be parallel with. And then you can pick your points as many as you like in here and then place that dimension and your, your dimensions will always be parallel to those two picked points. There also is the perpendicular option. So I can do the same thing where I can pick those two points along that plane and then we can start picking points here. And as you can see, they're coming in perpendicular to that edge, which is a lot easier than me trying to pick two random points and then using the add and the remove options uh, to get those aligned. I did not know that existed for a long time using Tecla, so I hope that helps a few people out there when dealing with like this sort of odd shaped bolt groups or bolt groups that are like, um, you know, misaligned with, with, um, some, with each other or, or with something else that I'm trying to dimension to. So the last tip that I want to show you today, let me open up one more drawing. Um, I don't really have anything on this drawing. It's just a simple curved member. Um, but a lot of people, especially when you're new to Tecla, I find are trying to dimension things that are radius or curved, and then they're, they're coming up with dimension strings that are not correct. And I want to explain why, and I want to show you how to get them in there correctly. So this beam is actually a, uh, it's the center line is at a 10 foot radius. And I know that because I modeled it in as a 10 foot radius. So I may come in here to my dimensioning tab and I'm going to add, you know, a radial dimension, or I may want to add one of these curved dimensions. If I have, you know, stiffeners or, or connections or something that I need to dimension to this tip applies to all of these that go along a curve. Um, I'm going to use the radius dimension and let's say that I, just came in here and I have my center line turned on and I just sort of picked three random points along here. Um, you can see that that's dimensioning out as nine foot one and three quarter, but you know, you know, I, as I said, I, I know that I dimension this at a 10 foot radius along the center line. So, you know, maybe I'll come along here and I'll try something else. I'll try picking up here, picking those three points. And now I'm getting 10 foot three and 11 sixteenths. And you know, again, the, these are not correct. So what do I do to get a proper dimension in here? Well, when Tecla makes a curved member, it's actually segmenting it along that curve, even if you can't see it. And th there are some adjustments in Tecla for how smooth that curve is visually. But when you really get down to it, it is still segmenting it along that path, uh, you know, technically, I'm doing air quotes, technically it is being segmented. So in order to get an accurate radius dimension, what you want to do is pick those segments. Now, how can I do that? If I use a snap override where I either right click and I choose the end option, or I can come down here and, and disable all of my other snaps, I can choose end. And if you hit three end points and you may have to, you know, search a little bit, there you go, I found an end point on that, that center line there. And then I'll do the same thing for my second point. We'll choose end again, and I'll sort of move along this until I get to the next end point in that segment. And then I'll do one more end snap, and we'll come along here till I get to another end point. There's one. And as you can see, that dimension is now showing up as 10 feet. So anything that is curved, anything that is radius, you want to pick those dimension points on the end points, which are technically the end points of that segment. Otherwise, you could end up with inaccurate dimensions here like you see over on the left. So that's my quick tips and tricks video for today. Just a couple of handy manual dimensioning tools. I hope you guys find them helpful. Um, as always, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.